back in January, we lost a very iconic person to the music industry. He went by the name of James M. Tume. Some may know him, some may not know him, but he's basically, to me, the forefather of hip hop. And the reason why I say he's the forefather of hip hop is because simply there's there's one staple in music right now that if you play this song anywhere, any given time, everybody knows this song. I'm not saying there wasn't hip hop prior to this, but this is a song that's like, it's kind of like broken glass everywhere. Like when you hear that, if you're a real hip hop artist, not even artist, you're a real hip hop head. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And the song that I'm talking about is Juicy. A Biggie Smalls. When you hear that start, you know exactly where it came from. But if you don't know that, that is also a sample. Right? And the creator of that, like I said, was James M. Tume. And with his passing, it kind of makes you feel like, what direction is music heading in? Because at the end of the day, it's like, there's no more of these iconic people. The turnover rate right now is so fast that it's like, I don't understand. Do, do, do the new artists not factor in the longevity and how they plan on making money down in the future? And to be short, and to be quick on that answer, it's no. Like, comment, share, subscribe if you want more content like this. Do they understand what a record label is and how you get into certain algorithms and how do you get into certain rooms? And Nah, they don't understand that. Everything is just about this quick cash and this quick money now. I'm telling you this right now. I watched the interview with, with, this, with this elder, right? And he explained to everybody that the royalties alone and the percentage alone from Juicy, right? It was able to put his children through school and keep him well off throughout his life and his career, right? When I hear stuff like that, I wonder, does anybody feel like their music right now is going to be able to feed them in the future? And I highly doubt it. I highly, highly, highly doubt it. I will forever say that that Juicy sample will remain as the most iconic sample ever. And I kind of believe that that... It's always going to open a door. Like, you know what I mean? It's always going to open a door for somebody to come and sample again and again and again. But sample properly in the sense of music that's going to be in the algorithm you're going to pay for your clearance fees you're going to do everything the right way even though sometimes you might create a song send it over to where it needs to be and then it still may not get cleared we've seen this with um Nicki Minaj and the Nas song and I believe the original came from Tracy Chapman they created the song they're two major artists in the entertainment world but yet they still never got clearance so the song never came out so if you follow this person's career, Mr. James Tume, right? You will understand what I'm trying to say, where it's like, we got to go back and study these people. We got to go back and study people who are in broadcasting. You got to go back and study people who are in journalism because there is a structure to this. And the structure is in there. Even though they weren't doing stuff independently, you could see where the structure is. The structure is like format. Even the simple way how we we arrange music nowadays. To me, the arrangement of music is not even in, in a sequence anymore. It's literally all over the place. And so when you listen to these old school people, you get a better understanding of the way how music is supposed to be put together. Like I have a problem, me personally, I have a problem when entertainers say, oh, I created that song in five minutes. If you have any respect for music, if you have respect for the money that's coming in, if you have respect for your craft, 
like, comment, share, subscribe if you want more content like this. You don't tell somebody that you made music in five minutes because it's impossible for you to make music in five minutes. Impossible. All those words are a lifetime of experience. Those sounds that the producers create with pads and those are a lifetime of sounds. People were playing real instruments. Like to me, I feel like a producer right now should be able to play every instrument. You're not a real producer if you can't play every instrument. Even if you're an artist right now. Okay, cool. You know how to create a song, but do you know how to read music? And people like Mr. James Tume. They are they are the people who left a lot of information. Whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on whether people who knew them, there's a lot of information that's left behind for you to actually obtain and for you to put yourself into a perspective and how you're gonna live to your old age with the music that you're creating right now. Because as you see, Spotify, I don't think there's longevity with your music on Spotify. Unless you're you're pushing people over there. You're pushing people over there. I don't see no longevity in Apple Music unless you're pushing people over there. What I'm saying to you is there's ways to create music where you automatically stay in the algorithm. And if you go back and you listen to these people, you understand how you, to create that type of music. You understand? Even when it comes to payment, once again, you have to know how to negotiate your contract. I'm not saying that you're not going to get burned. I'm not saying that you might have something you need to do and this money right now in your mind is saying you're going to flip it. But don't seem surprised when it's not what you think because it's never what you think you understand what I'm saying I really feel that right now if, if, if you guys really think about what I'm saying to you think about the juicy sample alone it's been used by Keisha Cole and, and um, Lil Kim it's been used by Biggie obviously All of those songs to this day are still making money. Even though you may not hear them, they're still making money because they're caught in the algorithm. That's why forever and forever, I'll always take off my hat to Diddy, P. Diddy, Sean Combs, Mr. Love, whatever you call him nowadays. I'll always take off my hat to him when it comes to business because he knew exactly what he was doing when he was seeking out the older generation. You understand? To put their music into the new generation's music like comment share subscribe if you want more content like this